When you start working with Countersketch, there will be a start screen with a series of tiles. Each tile represents a collection within Countersketch. The appearance of your start screen will vary based on the version of Countersketch you are running, Bridal, Plus, or Studio, and some of the options you or your manager have set. To start with the Style Quiz, click on the Style Quiz tile below. Click on the Take Quiz button and instruct the customer to click on the images that most appeal to them or that they think would appeal to the person that they are shopping for. Try to keep it quick. This can be a great icebreaker and helps narrow down the selection for someone who is having trouble deciding. Click on Shop This Style and Countersketch will display designs that fit the customer's primary style. The Showcase screen is now displaying all of the designs that are available for the primary style selected in the Style Quiz. The inventory appears in the middle of the screen and you can browse much like you would a web page. Use the scroll bar on the right or the mouse wheel to see additional designs. As you scroll, more designs will load. Control how large the designs appear on the screen by running the slider near the top. Find a size that is comfortable and convenient for you and your customer. The Home button at the top of the screen will take you back to the Counter Sketch Start screen. I can change the display materials of my designs by selecting from the Materials column on the left. So if I want to view the designs in gold, I can do that. Or if I want to view the models with colored stones, I can do that as well. I just click here and select the color my client is interested in. As I hover over the material with my mouse, I get a description of the material below. Your customer may want to know the difference between platinum or continuum silver, for instance. The descriptions of the materials are customer friendly and jargon free. We can narrow a search further by applying search filters. These appear along the top of the showcase. The first setting, while not technically a filter, allows us to change the way our models appear in the showcase. The default is a three quarters view but we can display the models from a looking down view, through finger view, or side view. While you will use the three-quarter view most frequently, these alternative views can help you find a model with particular detailing more quickly. Next, I can filter by center stone shape. By clicking on the center shape button, a menu will fly out with the filters that I can apply. If more options are available than are shown, a scroll bar will appear on the right. Scroll using your mouse wheel to see additional options. Click on the desired gem shapes and a check mark will appear next to that shape. This will filter the search results to only display models that can be modified to use the selected shapes. Note that the images of the models themselves will not update, but when you open them and customize, they will have that option for center stone selected. There are several additional types of filters that you can apply such as center setting, style, and design element. The filters for style are the same filters that are automatically applied when you take the style quiz. So if you wanted to search for a mounting based on a customer's secondary style, you can change that filter here. You can apply too many filters where you get too few results or none at all. When this happens, click on the filter again to remove it or click on Clear to clear all of the selected filters in that category. Single click on a design to display the design details. Here you will be shown a larger view of the design and thumbnails of the alternative views on the right. Click on the thumbnails to switch to this view. Below this you will see all of the stone shapes that are compatible with this model. Some designs are compatible with many stone shapes and some just a single stone shape. It depends on the design. If your customer is set on a particular stone shape, you will want to apply the appropriate filter so only designs compatible with that shape appear. To open a model from the design details, either click on the desired stone shape below, which will open up the model with that stone shape applied, or simply click on the arrow in the lower right hand corner. In Customize mode, to rotate the design, hold down the right mouse button while moving the mouse. Zoom in on parts of the model by pointing to the part of the design with the mouse and using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Move the mouse wheel away from you to zoom in and towards you to zoom out. 
To pan or slide the design in the viewport, hold down Shift on the keyboard and right-click while moving the mouse. On the left-hand side of the customized screen is the design stack. This contains the tools used to modify the design. At the top of the design stack are the design options. Here you set the finger size and can turn on or off a variety of options for this particular model, such as turning on or off accent stones, changing setting types, and rotating the center stone. The design options for each model will vary based on the particular design. Below that you will find a series of menus. To access the controls in these menus, click on their title. This will expose sliders and or shape choosers that will change the design. The sliders control things like the size of gems and the thickness of the ring shank. Run the sliders by left clicking and dragging your mouse. The area of the ring is, that is controlled by the slider will highlight as you run the slider. Shape choosers control things like gem shapes and profile shapes. Click on Gem Center and you will be shown a shape chooser with the stone shapes that are available for this model. Profile shapes also use shape choosers. Profiles control things like the shape of the ring surface. Some shape choosers will have more shapes to choose from than can be displayed at one time. In these instances, click on the arrows along the side of the shapes to see more options. Most ring designs have a matching band option. When this is toggled on, the matching band will appear on your screen. The controls for the matching band will appear in a tab at the top of the design stack. Click on this tab and you can modify the matching band in the same fashion as the main ring. When you are practicing your skills with Countersketch, it is beneficial to click on each of the options of a model. When you are doing a design consultation, you will want to focus on the elements that are important to the customer only. While in Customize mode, if you make a change and you don't like it, you can use the Undo button near the top left corner. The button next to it will redo the previous action. To return a slider to its original position, you can click on the Options button next to the slider and select Restore Defaults. If you want to try a different design, use the breadcrumbs at the top of the screen to either return to your showcase or the Start screen. Anytime you start working with a customer, you'll want to create a portfolio to save your customer's designs. To create a new portfolio from the Customize screen, click on the plus sign in the upper left-hand corner. In the dialog box that appears, type in a name for the portfolio. I like to use the customer's last name followed by their first name. And click the Submit button. Now our starting point model and any subsequent save points will be added to Mrs. Jones's portfolio. Then I like to open the Design Manager. Do this by clicking on the File folder in the upper left hand corner. Here I can enter in any customer information that I want to capture. You can do this at any point in the design process, though I prefer to do it early so I don't forget. Enter in as much info in the customer info fields as you feel is helpful. Customer name and contact info for sure though. The customer comments field is a great place to record info like the customer's finger size, due date, event that the ring is being purchased for, and any other information that you may want to be reminded of if revisiting this design. Now we'll close the design manager and get back to designing. Next I want to talk about a process we call storyboarding. This goes hand in hand with creating portfolios and is something we recommend doing in each of your design consultations. Edit the ring as always, starting by sizing the customer and setting the appropriate finger size. While Countersketch is fully parametric and you can change the finger size at any point in time, if you are making drastic changes to the finger size, it will have an obvious effect on the design. So you don't want to get it perfect for, say, a size 5 when the customer is a size 10. Once you have made this change, click on the Save icon at the top of the screen. Make another change, such as Center Gem Shape, and click on Save again. In this way, we are documenting the design process, so if we need to go back several steps in the process and take it in another direction, we can go back to one of these save points. It is a good idea when you make these changes and save to focus the screen on the area of the change. When you save and counter sketch takes a snapshot of the screen so it will provide a visual cue of what was changed. 
Now if I go back to the Design Manager by clicking on the folder icon at the top, I will see my saved designs. To the right appear the designs in the portfolio. Base designs are the unmodified designs that have been opened when this portfolio was active. Any design that is opened and customized will be added to the current portfolio. To the right is the design save history for a model. The most recent save is directly to the right of the base design. I can open any of these designs in customize mode by double clicking on the image in the design manager. Once you get the design to a place that the customer loves, you are ready to create a photorealistic image of the design. Position the ring on the screen nice and big. This is like setting up a picture in a camera. What you see on the screen is what the render camera will see. Once you are satisfied, click on the render button in the top right hand corner. This will open a new window and your render will begin. This can take a few minutes depending on the complexity of the model. Once the render is complete, if you are satisfied, you can save the image by clicking on the disk at the top of the window. This will open a standard Windows Save dialog box. When the customer is ready to order, click on Order at the top of the screen. Next I need to fill out the order form. If I filled in customer information in the portfolio, this information will pass forward. You only need to include the customer's first name and last name. The rest of the customer information is optional. Then I need to specify where my center stone is coming from. I can purchase stones from Stellar, send a stone in for Stellar to set, or set the stone myself. If I am purchasing my stones from Stellar, I can either purchase a serialized stone or specify a quality range. I'm going to simply specify a quality range, so I need to toggle off the serialized stone option and select my desired quality from the dropdown. Now I need to select how I want the mounting finished. For finish, I can have it finished and set, a finished casting with no gems, or a semi-finished casting, or what we sometimes call a clip and chip. I can even request a prototype. Next, I need to confirm that the components to be ordered and the ring sizes are accurate. If I need to change the alloys of the mounting, I can do that on the right. Now I need to select a source for the melee. Here again, I'm going to purchase these from Stellar. Pick your desired quality from the dropdown. Next, we need to decide on how we would like our piece hallmarked. In Preferences, you can figure what option is selected by default. I'm going to select the option of having the quality mark and stellar trademark laser engraved. If your customer is interested in having their ring custom engraved, toggle on the Add Custom Engraving option. This will expand the engraving menu. Type the desired engraving into the text field. You are limited to 13 characters, including spaces. Set the font font size, and fill color from the dropdowns. The preview will automatically update as you make your selections. If you select more than a ring, Stellar will document the customer's ring as it moves through the manufacturing process. You can get pictures in a hardbound book or digital images only. If a wax try-on is part of your selling process, you can request a non-castable resin model for your customer to try on. Additional design notes is for any special requests for CAM services that you are not able to complete in the software. Now click on Get Pricing. On the Get Pricing screen, I need to add the name of the consultant and their contact info so they can track the progress of the order for the customer. I also need to include a reference number. This may come from your POS system or an internal job number. Then, depending on the customization I've done on this model and options we selected on the order screen, either Place Order or Request Quote will be available as options. If my design is eligible for exact pricing, meeting each of the four exact pricing requirements, I can place my order here. If not, I need to request a quote and will receive a more precise quote via email from Stellar, typically in one business day. I can then approve, reject, or request changes before placing the order. Once I click on Place Final Order, I will get an order confirmation number. And depending on my selections, I can expect a finished piece back from Stellar in 7 to 10 business days.